Our dearest Josh, some souls are too beautiful for this one. Who's doing one, two? Good afternoon, friends and family. On behalf of the Edwards family, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all of you that could join us here and even on the live stream to celebrate the life of Joshua John Edwards. 
for those that are joining us on the live stream, just to let you know that there are a few songs like It Is Well With My Soul and Photograph by Ed Sheeran and Sleeping Child by Michael Learns to Rock that won't be available over the live stream due to copyright laws. So we ask you if you would download those on your mobile device beforehand so that you can play them along with us at the right time. You can look through the order of service that was posted by the family and sent out on a link yesterday when that particular song comes up. Now, the Edwards family have asked me to please take this opportunity to extend their sincere thanks to so many of you that have poured out your love and your care and your support for them during this very difficult time. They have so appreciated your kindness and your generosity with many of you even praying with them and this community that have come around them in this time. Thank you. We'd like to open our service today with a reading from Psalm 23. The Lord, the psalmist shepherd, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Please join me as we come to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have today to celebrate Josh's life. Thank you for blessing him to us for the time that he was with us. We pray, Lord, that you would comfort us today by your Spirit and be here with us today as we gather in your name, Lord. We pray you will strengthen us as we remember and celebrate Josh's life. You say in your word, Lord, that blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Please guide us in your word here today, Lord. As we come to you today, Lord, we also want to bring to you the dear Seacrest family as they mourn the loss of their beloved mum and wife. Please would you comfort and strengthen them, Lord, through this difficult time, helping them to trust in you, and look to you. We pray that you will be with both families as we struggle through the upcoming days, weeks, months, and even years. We pray that you would grant us all peace, hope, and understanding as we navigate this difficult path and these days ahead. Knowing that you know all things and that it is in you that we live and move and have our being. We trust you, Lord, and we pray that you will be glorified in all that we say and do here today. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please would you stand with us now as we sing It Is Well With My Soul. The words you'll find at the back.
person and friend. It breaks our heart that you were taken too soon. You were Our dearest Josh, some souls are too beautiful for this world, and so they must leave. Our dearest Josh, some souls are too beautiful for this world, and so they must leave. The hard truth is that we all believe we would still have so much more time. All over on the other side of the world, we hope that you can feel our thoughts and our love just as we can feel yours. We can see your bright smile plastered in every photo. And you are a happy, loved, and wonderful brother, son, nephew, grandson, cousin, and friend. It breaks our heart that you were taken too soon. You were a thoughtful young man. The last time we saw each other, you were only 11. And this was already so evident through the unforgettable, exper unforgettable experiences we got to share with you. The Australian holiday, for all of us, was filled with so much joy and laughter. The visits to Mount Tambourine, the theme parks, snorkeling, dangerous boat trips with Henry's driving, beach days and games with all moments we will never take for granted. Excitement around your next visit to Australia was always lingering and we know you would have loved to go and visit the exotic reptiles we could have shown you. We are so grateful that we got to share all these moments with you and so heartbroken that we cannot share any more and watch you grow up with Big Josh and Amy. Big Josh will never have the opportunity to have a beer with you. Most shockingly, you will never be able to see the Wallabies win the World Cup. Neither will any of us though, so don't feel left out. Taylor, Hannah, Julie and Tim will never have a piece of them, will have a piece of them missing, just as we all will. A piece that can never be filled by anyone else, but only you, your spirit and warm memories. Taylor, will find the birthdays especially hard, blowing out the candles alone. But we hope that she can find peace in knowing that you are in a happy place. We've all learned a massive lesson to hold on tight to the ones that we love, put the effort to stay in touch and book holidays whilst we're still healthy and able. Your loss is a tragedy, the first tragedy this family has faced. Together we'll continue to remember and share your stories and happy song for the rest of our lives. We know you're resting in peace and watching over all of us today. We ask that you take care of I have a message here from Gareth, Sarah, Jacob, and George. Josh, although the time we spent together was short and sweet, the memories are happy ones, and you are truly going to be missed. I first met you when you were a little toddler, and you couldn't say my name. You and Taylor called me your friend, and this is something... I will never forget. We stayed with you in South Africa and we have great memories of fun we had going down the, long, the log ride at Gold Reef City. You stayed with us in our little house in Chino. Such a happy boy. I will cherish our little walks we had with my dog Brian. I'm sad you won't meet your little cousins Jacob and George. But I will tell them all about you, how kind, caring, and what a lovely young man you were turning into. Josh, we will always miss you and love you. We will look for the brightest star in the sky and never forget you. Gareth, Sarah, Jacob, and George. Rob also wanted to send out his thoughts. He says, thinking of you, Josh, always in my heart, love Uncle Rob. Thank you for that, Uncle Rob. I also have a tribute here from Costa and Erin and Theo and Leah. Josh, when we close our eyes and think of you, right from when you were really little to our FaceTime call just a few weeks ago, 
One thing that shines bright in our memories is the happy smile you always had. We are so proud of the young man you became and honoured to call you family. We remember the Christmas we all shared in Ireland when you and Tay were just five years old. You two showed us for the first time as adults just how magical Christmas is for children. This Christmas memory will always be one of our favorite memories. We will miss you forever and hold you in our hearts always. All our love, Aaron, Costa, Theo, and Leah. They also say here, P.S., we still think your pet hedgehog Smirnoff looks like a rat. I have a message too from Nana Marge and Granddad Dave. Tribute to Josh. You will always be affectionately known as little Josh to us, as your big cousin, Big Josh, in Australia was a few years older. We remember you as a three-year-old, jumping on the trampoline at Secret Garden with your twin sister, Taylor. We remember you as a five-year-old, shivering in the freezing cold at Disneyland Paris, happily waiting for Mickey Mouse and the Disney Parade. We remember you at Gold Reef City with trembling lips saying, that was so scary after going on a big roller coaster ride. We remember your ninth birthday picnic up in Cooley Mountains where you, Tay, Hannah, Max and Jay were looking for leprechauns. We remember your love of animals and your explanation for becoming a vegetarian. You told us that you couldn't eat bee dog, so how could you eat anything, anything for the animal? We remember your love for your golf cart and how you took the long way around when bringing us and charity back from your mom and dad's 40th party. We remember your thoughtfulness when on one of our visits, we took you for lunch at the clubhouse and you wanted to pay the bill because you said we had spent a lot to come and visit. We remember how proud you were of Heronbridge School where you'll never be forgotten. But most of all, we'll remember how you grew into a happy, polite, thoughtful and caring young man. Joshi, you lit up the room with your smile and our hearts with your love. You were taken too soon. We weren't ready to let you go. Be happy wherever you are. We will love you forever until we meet again. Nana Marge and Granddad Dave. Thank you. This is a message for Josh from Charity. I'm going to miss you so much, Josh. You were my friend. You never wanted to see me sad. I remember when I put your phone in the wash, you didn't get angry, but you wanted to take the blame for me because you didn't want me to get in trouble. You were such a loving, caring person. When you came from school, the first thing you would say is, hello, Charity, how was your day? I will not hear that voice anymore. You left a big gap in our hearts. We will always love you, Josh. Go well. May the angel be with you. Hello, everyone. I'm um, <coughs> Becky. I'm Josh's aunt. Just give me a second. Josh, my beautiful nephew, words cannot describe how sad I am that you are gone. It still doesn't feel real, and I would do anything to turn back time, as I know we all would. Sorry. 
You always greeted with a smile on your face, and you were always such a pleasure to be around. Every memory I hold of you is a good one. It's a great one. You helped me so much with my photo shoots around Copperleaf, driving us around on your golf cart. I appreciated you so much, and I was always so proud of you. I would introduce you as my nephew, Josh, and you would immediately get along and chat to whoever we were with. You would take us to all the good spots and chat to everyone along the way. I was and still am so proud of such a well-mannered and confident boy that you have grown to be. Every time we were together as a family, you were always happy, always a shining light. You had so much patience with Scarlett. She loves you dearly. The last time I saw you at Nana and Grando's house, Scarlett had insisted on seeing you before we left. And the very last moment that I ever saw you, her arms were wrapped around your legs. Tim and Julie, you raised a wonderful boy. And though his life was cut short, we at least know that it was a good one, in a stable home, full of happiness and all the love in the world. Joshi, you leave a fa behind a family that loves you so dearly. You are a huge part of our lives. Thank you, Josh, for being who you were. We will forever hold on to the wonderful memories of you in our hearts. At every weekend, Bri, family birthdays, December holidays, and trips to Sun City, and every day that we live without you here, you will remain a part of us in our hearts forever. And I believe that one day we will all be reunited in the kingdom of heaven. John 14, one to four reads, as Jesus speaks to his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you will always so be where I am. You know the way to the place that I'm going. On behalf of my mom and dad, Josh's nana and grando, Josh was so loved, such a wonderful boy. We couldn't have asked for a more loving and kind grandson in all the world. He was always such a pleasure to see with his big, beautiful smile and his little voice, hello, Nana, hello, Grando, will forever be missed. Always, help, always willing to help Nana with her shopping from the car. Josh, you are a wonderful grandson. We couldn't have been blessed more to have had you as such a huge part of our lives. And though your precious life was cut so short, we will forever hold all the wonderful memories of you in our hearts. To Max and Jade and your cousins, you were more like brothers and best friends in the world. You were all so lucky to have grown up together and developed such an incredibly close bond. You will always be remembered as one of the teenagers, a part of the gang, a beloved part of our family, and we will always love you, Joshi, forever and more. My husband, Gunther, was very fond of Josh. He unfortunately couldn't be here today, and he's asked me to share a few words. I will always remember Josh as a well-mannered young man that really showed a love and interest in God's animals. A righteous man is kind to his animals, Proverbs 12, verse 10. I truly hope there are animals in heaven for Josh to enjoy, and I'm sure there are. Josh put the fear of life into me once on the 18th hole whilst playing golf with some adventurous driving in his golf cart with me by his side, and he made me forget about the poor game I had just played for sure. I remember losing Josh's drone in Neisner, and we briefly lost Josh too in his desperate hunt to find it in the bush, in the dark. We were all so worried and so relieved when we finally found you. I woke up before the sun the next morning and was so relieved that we retrieved your drone that morning. I was truly fond of Josh, a lovely well-mannered boy who was always friendly towards me. I will miss you, Josh, with all my heart. Thank you. This is a poem written for Josh by his granddad, Phil Crew. Josh, our cherished grandson, you were taken far too soon a young life lost for no good cause on that fateful afternoon. You'll never live a life set out, a life you should have had. You'll never be a husband, you'll never be a dad. Our lives are filled with sorrow, 
our lives are filled with tears. The grief that sits upon us will be grief for many years. We never understood God's plan, no matter how we tried. The only thing we know for sure, God wants you at his side. Hello, Nana. Hello, Grando. We'll hear that voice no more. The voice that filled our hearts with joy when you walked through our front door. Little things that will remind us, remind us of your fate. When we book a restaurant table, not for nine, it's just for eight. No more veggie burgers at our Sunday braai. No more Heronbridge homeschooling. No more Heronbridge war cry. You're not there to chase old bee dog when he jumps the garden wall. You're not there to help your sisters should your sisters ever fall. Nan and I have always loved you since the day that you were born. Max and Jay are like your brothers, and like brothers they will mourn. As I said my final farewell, I stroke, it's me, Hannah. Listen, I really miss you, and to be honest, I'm kind of mad because you have had a scare before. I'm sorry I have not been being that brave. It's just that at night I get really sad. I still miss you every day, but I'm thankful for every day I got to have with you. Pain still exists because I lost the most loving and caring human alive. But so too does the joy that came from loving and knowing you. I'm unlucky to have had to say goodbye to you, Joshi. But I'm luckier because I had someone who made saying goodbye the hardest thing ever. Joshi, you don't understand how much I miss you. And I'm never forgetting or replacing you, Joshi. You always saw the good in me and tried your best to include me. Joshi, I've been saying this a lot, but Joshi, we miss you. The best thing about myself was always Josh. Without hesitation, Josh was there to carry my bags no matter how many I had. He was he made sure to collect the shopping bags from my hands. He was always there to make sure I was okay at school and if I wasn't, he'd get to the bottom of it. He'd take me on golf cart rides the second he found out I was sad. He was there ready as ever if I told him I had drama. He took me to gym or fetched me on a, if I went on a run I couldn't handle. He'd carry me out of shops if he felt I was unsafe. He'd wait outside every public bathroom I used just to make sure I came out okay, even though I hated it. He'd shout, babe, I hope you're not hitting on any boys if any boy tried to approach me in public. Josh was the biggest gentleman on this planet and the best thing about me is that I can say I am his twin sister. Because of Josh and his respect towards everyone and every animal, I aspire to be... <sighs> Where was I? I aspire to be... Oh, he's the person I aspire to be because of him. I aspire to make people feel the way he made people feel. I aspire to make people feel as loved and touched as he made everyone feel, no matter how many times you met him. Josh makes me want to be the biggest and best version of myself because we all know Josh was the best version of himself all the time, no matter what. I miss you. I miss you more than anyone will ever know and no one will ever quite understand how I feel. I feel like a whole part of me has gone missing and it most definitely has. The best version of me. The best part of me. My favorite part of me. My twin brother is gone. I, however, will do everything in his name, with him in my heart forever, because I'm already beyond lucky to be able say, to say that Joshua John Edwards is my twin brother and my guardian angel. Josh and I had a bond, a very unique bond. Josh was never just a sibling to me. He's the other half of me, the male version of me, the better version of me. We did everything and anything together, and no matter what, I admired everything he did and the way he spoke to everyone, and I will continue to admire him every day. 
Josh and I would spend every night together from drinking tea and watching a thriller, which was our favourite, to having a couple of friends over and having the best time of our lives. That was, I was, was told to say that part instead. Where was I? Josh, was, Josh never went to bed without saying I love you. And if I didn't say it back, he'd say it until I did. He showed his love for me in everything he did. And I'll show my love for him in everything that I do. Josh will always be with me. Always. He's the person I aspire to be every single day. Josh did everything with love and passion, from helping me rearrange my bedroom, to playing ice hockey, to giving people a random lift on the golf cart. Josh and I were supposed to spend our metric dance together, our 17th, our 18th, our 19th, and every other birthday together. We were supposed to matriculate together, move overseas and start university together, get our first cars together, move into our own little apartment together. I will do all of these things, but with Josh in my heart, the way he would want me to and the way he would have done it, knowing he's still with me inside, reminding me of the person he was and the person I aspire to be. Our hearts were beating together from the second we were born, and I can't imagine nor believe that I have to wake up every morning without him. I have to live without him by my side. But I will wake up every morning and continue just the way he would and the way he would want me to. Josh, Max, Jay and I were the OGs. We always called ourselves that. We all did everything together and you definitely made our pact. All three of us miss you dearly but we're all going to continue. But to continue for you the way you would with the love and the compassion that you had. Josh, Gemma and I were a trio. We did everything together in this estate, from golf cart rides to watch the sunset every evening to us girls trying to curl his leg hair. Both of us cherished him more than you'll ever know and it's hard to think that he's not part of us anymore. Gemma and I will both continue, but we will also continue under Josh's name and the way he would and the way he would want us to. Josh was so loved by so many. He was the first person I've ever loved. I have never loved or cherished anyone the way that I love you and the way that I'll always cherish you. Dear Josh, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> This is the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. <laughs> From the moment we first met, I knew in my heart you were destined for great things in life. You always had a smile on your face and were always a happy little boy and grew into a kind, polite young man. Any dad would have been proud to call you their son. Kids think of their dads as superheroes and although you will never get that opportunity, Josh, you were already a superhero. You were loved by so many and brought people together. Everyone we know here in Copperleaf was as a result of your bubbly personality. I will never forget all the happy memories we shared from our holidays, time at home, going for long walks, and our long chats on the patio after mom had gone to bed. I will never forget for your love I will never forget your love for Bee Dog and Storm and always sneaking them into your room after we had gone to bed. You won't believe it, but Mum actually allows Bee Dog and, Sm and Storm to sleep in our room now, and Bee Dog has even slept on our bed for the last two nights. Bee Dog knows that you are not here and often looks like he has a sad face. You used to tell Mum and I he was your brother. We will love and look after Bee Dog and Storm just like you did. You were the kindest, caring, and loving brother any sister could have asked for. Your last words to Hannah were, Good night, Hannah, I love you. And your last words to Tay, Love you, Tay. Taylor and Hannah both loved you more than you could imagine, and I think you would have been best friends for life. You would have been the family member to bring everyone together in the future. You would have been the rock. Please continue to look after Hannah and Taylor from heaven. You had a passion for ice hockey, rugby, and MotoGP. You knew all the facts about MotoGP, and Mom would have taken you to watch a live race one day. Whenever we watch a race, we will be thinking of you. 
In a very short time, you learned how to ice skate and play ice hockey. I'm 100% certain that you would have gone far in the sport and will definitely be missed by your team. I will never forget your face when we bought you the golf cart. I think it was possibly one of the best days of your life. You had many great adventures on it in Copperleaf and drove around with the biggest smile on your face. You were always willing to assist when needed, dropping something off or picking something up. You were like our very own private Uber. A few weeks ago, after a couple of beers, I told you and Taylor I would buy you a car in March so you could start to learn to drive a manual before you got your learner's licenses. You put so much research into cars and knew exactly what you wanted as a starter car. Taylor and I have decided that we will still get the car, a white Ford Fiesta, and in time, we'll get a personalized plate for it and a sticker that says, it's me, Josh, as you famously say when you phoned me your mum. You were always happy to talk to Nana Marge, Granda, Dave, Kate, Henry, Big Josh, Amy, Erin, Costa, Theo, Leah, Gareth, Sarah, George, Jake, and Rob on FaceTime. Although you didn't get to spend much time with them, the times you did were special and full of fun and happiness. They all loved you so dearly. You were the best cousin to Max and Jay that anyone could have asked for and had a very special place in Nana and Grando's heart. Josh, you were a kind, honest boy who always did good for others. The song Sleeping Child could have been written for you. If all the people around the world had a mind like yours, we would have no fighting and no wars. There would be lasting peace on earth. If all the kings and all the leaders could see you here this way, they would hold the earth in their arms and they would learn to watch you. I will never forget all our Sun City trips and in one day you went down the Temple of Courage about 50 times. Courage is one thing that you certainly had a lot of. You were one of the bravest people I knew. Joshua, you absolutely loved life, and we loved you, and will continue to love you. I will cherish all the memories. The day after you passed, I opened up your wallet and found a bank card and a photo of you and I. I never knew you had that photo. I think it's one that Hannah had taken of us. I will now carry that photo with me forever. You were the best brother, grandchild, cousin, and friend anyone could ask for, but most importantly, you were the best son. Hannah, Taylor, Mom, and I will never forget you. We are heartbroken and will be forever, but we will remember the good times we all had together. You are going to be missed by so many. Gone, but never forgotten, until we meet you again. Love you, Dad. The day God took you home. A million times I've needed you. A million times I've cried. If love alone could have saved you, you never would have died. In life, I love you dearly. In death, I love you still. In my heart, I hold a place no one else will ever fill. It broke my heart to lose you, but you didn't go alone. Part of me went with you the day God took you home. My beloved Joshi, my boodle bear, where do I begin? Albeit by only a minute, you are my very first baby and my very first true love. As my, as my heart is broken, I have learned the true meaning of sorrow and I am shattered that you have gone and that we will never hold each other tight again. I will miss everything about you. You are the perfect son, a gentle soul who loved everyone, your family, friends, animals and children. You greeted, connected, and cared for everyone you met and whose paths you crossed. I always knew that kindness came so naturally to you. You would hear my car pull up and come outside to check if there was shopping or a laptop to be carried in. 
I never told you to do this. You just did it with a smile. This week, the stories of kindness have poured in. Parents whose children you offered a lift home on your golf cart when you saw them walking home from the gate. To waiters and caddies that you befriended and helped along the way. As well as school moms and friends that you always had time for. Many of these stories I hadn't heard until now. Your amazing personality was able to connect with every child and animal you met. And our family and friends with small children would love visiting us as the little kids loved you and took to you, and you always had time for them. You made them laugh when they were grumpy and took them for a ride on your golf cart. You were a superhero. As a baby and little boy, you were perfect. Chubby, happy, and bouncy, always with a smile on your face, surrounded by love from the day you were born. Me and Dad, Nana Grando, Max, Jay, and Tay, living together at first, and with your very own school, Nana, open for you later. We were all so close. You even had an English accent long before you traveled outside of South Africa. How you will be missed by the OGs, Max, Jay, and Tay, the original four, and later the famous five when Hannah arrived, has hardly ever been apart. We were always at least a party of nine. From the Sun City weekends away, Belito summer holidays, a European trip, African adventures to Mozambique, and everything in between. You've always been a happy little guy, jumping off the big rock in Vorna Valley, into the pool, and loving your pets fiercely. I'm so glad you, lived here, you loved living here in Copper Leaf. You were so happy when we moved close to the ice rink, so you could finally take up hockey, a sport that you'd always wanted to do, and that you so so loved and was so proud of. That and the funny stories of adventure within the estate will warm my heart forever. Your infectious smile and character ensured you made friends quickly, child and adult alike. And thanks to you, we are surrounded by a wonderful circle of love within the estate. The parents were always happy to give you a lift home. And you were always the one to sit in the front seat, chatting away while the others had their AirPods in. I'll never forget you bursting into our room late one night, shivering and wet, but bursting with joy as you told us how much fun you and the boys had jumping into the dam one night. The golf ball business you tried to start by collecting balls from the bottom of the dams, where we knew a big leg of van lived. The sorting of the balls and sails wasn't as much fun, though, so I think the swimming and collecting was as far as you got. The nighttime bonfire you had with your friends before you were chased home by security. And you still visited security the next day to smooth things over and ensure you were on good terms, ready for the next time you were up to mischief with your friends. You loved to visit the driving range on your golf cart, hitting, at first missing, lots of golf balls on the range and the games we played. Even though I had to phone the odd neighbor, when your balls hit a house, we always had so much fun. You were famous on your green golf cart, even the club out, clubhouse delivery boy during lockdown. You knew the estate like the back of your hand and were always happy to take visitors on a tour, scouting out pretty places for photos with Becky and a tour guide to anyone who was curious. We will all remember the smile and wave you gave to everyone you passed, friends and strangers alike, cruising around, the coolest kid in town. You and B-Dog on, on the golf cart and us chasing him down the fairways and paths when he jumped the wall. Between us, we always knew where to find him and the golf has never minded. You were always happy at school. You made friends and were so proud and happy to be part of Heronbridge. The camps and war cries, I know you will be missed. You studied everything that was of interest to you, cars and golf carts, animals, motorbikes, the motor GP, ice hockey, and most recently hedgehogs. Your level of knowledge in an interest amazed us all. How lucky Taylor was to have you as her twin and best friends. Your heart beat from the moment you were there. You have been by her side for 16 years in a cot at school 
and negotiating on her behalf when she wanted to go to parties. You were her beloved twin who shared everything with her. The late night movies and midnight feasts, the chats about the spice and the boys she liked, all the adventures and holidays we've been on. You were always happy just to hang out together and made her laugh every single day. We couldn't help but give giggle every time you called her your womb mate. She got so cross, even your teachers had to stop it, tell, it, tell you to stop doing it at school. How lucky Hannah was to have, to have you as her big brother, always kind, always patient, and always willing to include her and make her laugh. The perfect big brother and role model anyone could have asked for. You were dad's best buddy and he was your superhero right from the start. He didn't even complain when you were a baby and puked down his jumpsuit while working for neck care and right before he got a call. I can barely think of a moment when there wasn't a big smile on your face and you always knew exactly what to do and say to me. I will so dearly miss our little chats. You were so easy to love. And while I wish you were here for the rest of my life, like it should have been, I am honored and proud to have been your mom for 16 years. I will cherish the memories from the moment you were born to the image of that big smile on your face when I dropped you off that day. Your final words to me, love you, mom. I'm gonna have fun today. My words to you, love you, Josh. See you later. And as I drove away, you grinned at me. I love you. I love you more. Impossible. Possible, possible. Thank you all so much for all your tributes. They were truly special. I'd like to spend a few minutes with you now and open God's word and allow it to minister to our hearts. It's important that as we reflect in a time like this, that we ponder on things eternal. I'd like to spend this time going through four questions with you today that will better help us understand the gospel. Romans 15 verse 13 says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The first question that we can ask today is who is God? Who is this God of hope? The gospel is rooted in the person and character of God. He is sovereign creator and owner of everything. In the first verse of the Bible, Genesis 1 verse 1 says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. He created everything out of nothing. He created you and he created me. Genesis 1.27 says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God is a personal and intimate God who created man to love serve and enjoy endless, endless fellowship with him. He created us for relationship that we might know him and worship him. John 17, 3 says, And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. 
And since God owns and rules everything, he has absolute authority over our lives. And we owe him absolute allegiance, obedience, and worship. Psalm 24 verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and the world and those that dwell therein. You belong to him. It is he who gives life, takes life, and sustains life. Your and my days are numbered. Every one of them has been written in his book. Every moment of each day has been sovereignly determined by God. We, like the rest of creation, are completely dependent upon God for everything. Acts 17 verse 28 says, For in him we live and move and have our being. And even some of the poets have said, For we are indeed his offspring. Not only is God sovereign creator and owner of everything, but he is also perfectly holy. He is set apart from everything in creation, including any other gods. He is the creator. There is no other God like him. There is no other God but him. He is set apart from sin. There is no sin in him, nor will he have anything to do with sin. Therefore, he cannot commit or approve of any evil. He, in his perfect holiness, demands that we be holy. He requires perfect obedience to his law. Leviticus 1 verse 44 and 45, and again in 1 Peter 1 verse 16, he says, you shall be holy, for I am holy. But there is one problem. Man, in his natural state, is not holy. So the second question we can ask today is, who is man? Who are we? The problem is, as I said a moment ago, we are not holy, but we are sinful. Man has broken God's law. Everyone is guilty of sin. There is no man who does not sin. God's word says in Romans 3 verse 10, and then in verse 23, None is righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now that doesn't mean that we are incapable of performing acts of human kindness, but we are completely incapable of understanding, loving, or pleasing God on our own. James 2 verse 10 says, For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of it all. Because man has broken God's law, man will pay the eternal penalty for sin. As Romans 6 verse 23 says, the wages of sin is death. So sin demands a penalty. God's holiness and justice demand that all sin be punished by death. The wrath of God is revealed against all the unrighteous and ungodly who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, who unless saved by God will experience the eternal penalty for sin. Friends, Man cannot save himself. He cannot save himself by his good works. Even man's righteous deeds are like filthy rags. What we all truthfully deserve is God's righteous punishment, his wrath for our sins for all eternity. This leaves man, this leaves you and me in a hopeless state, but for the Lord Jesus Christ. So that leads to our third question today. Who is Jesus Christ? Jesus, the Lord and Savior, according to the predetermined will of God, came to earth as both man and God. Truly God and truly man. Colossians 1 verse 16 to 17 tells us that all things were created through him and, f and for him. And in him, all things hold together.
He entered this world, and listen to this, while he was sustained by the nutrients within Mary's womb, was upholding the universe by the word of his power. And Jesus is truly man. And in great humility, he grew up in the pains of living in a fallen world like you and I do, though he himself never sinned. He lived a sinless life, the life that you and I have both failed to live. Jesus lived perfectly. He was tempted just as we are, yet he did not sin. In obedience to God and on behalf of his people, Jesus fulfilled all righteousness. He fulfilled, he fulfilled God's law. And as a demonstration of God's love, he died on the cross, paying the penalty of sin. He absorbed the wrath of God and took the place of his people. What a savior. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 says, He, the Father, made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. And on the third day, he rose and, and the grave, from the grave, apologies, and is alive today, thus accomplishing righteousness and forgiveness for all who turn from their sin and place their faith in him. Praise the Lord for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so our fourth and final question today is how will you and I respond? I beg of you, trust in the Lord. God in his grace and for his glory provides salvation to all who will believe. And true faith is always accompanied by repentance from sin. Every man woman and child must repent of all that dishonors God. Repentance is agreeing with God that you are a sinner, confessing your sins to him and making a conscious choice to deny yourself and turn from sin and toward Jesus. It isn't enough to just believe certain facts about Jesus. Even Satan and the demons believe in the true God. But they do not turn away from sin. They do not love and obey him. Christians believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Romans 10 verse 9 tells us, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. True saving faith always responds in obedience. And God commands all people everywhere to repent. Dear friends, if you are concerned that you are not saved, then I encourage you to turn away from your sin and any confidence in good works you may have and turn to the Lord, pleading, him, pleading with him for mercy and grace, for only he can save you. As Christians... We understand that we are sinners, but we trust in the person, life, and finished work of Christ on the cross as the only means of salvation, the only way we can be forgiven and reconciled to God. It is only in Christ that one can be forgiven and spared from God's wrath. It is only in Him that we can be reconciled with God and enjoy an intimate, joyful relationship with the triune God. Repent of all that dishonors God. Today is the day of salvation. And thus, if you do not know the Lord, I urge you, seek Him today. Seek Him while He may be found. Cry out to the Lord for mercy, and believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Plead with Him to graciously save you for his glory call on his name don't wait another day repent while you still have a chance and if jesus sets you free you will be free indeed 
If you are not sure if you are saved and if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to come and speak to me afterwards. If you are saved, praise be to God for the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Praise be to God that we are no longer slaves to sin, but we have been set free and are now slaves to righteousness. We no longer live for ourselves, but we live for our new master, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Allow me to repeat the scripture we opened with from Romans 15 verse 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I'd like to end our time with reading from Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. The words of Jesus. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Please pray with me. Dear Father, thank you for your word. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Your word is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to divide between the soul and the spirit bone and marrow, and judge the thoughts and intentions of men. Thank you that while we were still sinners, you sent your Son to die for us, to pay a price that we could never pay, so that we could know you and be with you for eternity. Lord, we believe, but help us overcome our unbelief. We pray, dear Lord, that you would comfort all that mourn here with us today. First the Edwards family and then the rest of us. Where else would we go, Lord? You have the words of eternal life. Help us to find peace and understanding in you, Lord. And help us to trust you. This is a difficult time for us, Lord. But we know that you know all things. And with you, all things are possible. The call of Christ here in this last scripture is so comforting to us. We are weary, Lord. We are heavy laden. Please grant us rest. Help us, Father, to glorify you in everything that we do. Amen. Okay. We are now going to do the Heronbridge war cry. So is it a... Hold on.
we're standing side by side, together, forever, our strength is in our heart. College, imagine, we're standing side by side, together, forever, our strength is in our heart. College, imagine, we're standing side by side, together, forever, our strength is in our heart. So once again, we would like to say thank you for joining us from the Edwards family. We appreciate you guys coming and spending this time. For those that joined us on the, on the live stream, thank you for joining this time as we reflected and celebrated on Joshua's life. We would like to um, ask the Edwards family, when you're ready, you guys can leave first and the rest of us, we will just wait until... The family have left and then we can join them afterwards. Mm -hmm.